Uh, very excited about this season. Uh, we're a very young team, but we're a very talented team. Uh, depends on how we, the season will depend on how we grow and mature early. Uh, we open up with a uh, brutal uh, preseason schedule before we hit the monster of our league. Uh, we open up in Salt Lake on August 23rd against a really good uh, East High School. And then we come back and play St. Joseph Regional. And then we have Amat, Milton, Georgia, and Calabasas. So uh, it's, it's a kind of a brutal schedule. And then obviously, then we start our league. So that's awesome. a lot of fun. Um, but we've got a chance to be you know, very, very good. But again, I think this is one of the most talented teams we've had uh, since I've been at J. Sarah. Just hoping that they gel um, together as a team and, and, and figure it out sooner, sooner than later. <laughs> Does it look like that's the case? I mean, there are all the pieces in place there. Yeah. No, we, we are, again, we're very talented. Um, we've actually got some depth, which we haven't had in years past. Um, but uh, again, it, it's, it's our youth that, that could either be a, a blessing for us or it could be a curse. Um, it, again, we've got to get these guys in camp. We're, you know, we start really camp on Monday. And get these guys. You know, it's it's so hard to evaluate without pads on. We look really good in t-shirts and shorts, um, but we don't play in t-shirts and shorts. Um, we did not have a great uh, passing league deal. I actually pulled us out of the last one because I wasn't happy with the way we were performing or competing. Uh, I think I got that through to uh, my players. And uh, th there's a there's a standard that's been set um, at J. Sarah, and we haven't had a ton of success, but we've had some success. We've had some great players come through there. And not only great players, but great young men. And so the standard's been set. So it's up to these guys to, to uphold that and hopefully take, take that standard even higher. Thank you. Uh, just to everybody in the, you know, the, the panel here, uh, you know, teams take big steps within, in, within their um, development. Um, playing a great team like Bosco with seven points a year ago, did that, um, did that could be Tell you something about the, yourself, what did you learn out of that process, and, and where does that kind of take you maybe into this, into this next season? Well, I, I think that it gave our kids um, a great belief in that they can play with anybody. Obviously, Bosco is one of the best programs every year in, in not just our league, but in the nation. Uh, and the one thing we talked about all week was, do you believe? And I thought that week that they really did believe, and you know, we had a great opportunity to win that game. A couple of things go our way at the end. I think we have a chance to, to walk out of there with a win. Um, but I think that the players, you know, our, my players are good players, and they're not afraid to compete with anybody. But until you've had success against those teams, you're always kind of questioning, can we really play with those teams? I think that we've proven that we can play with, with some of the best teams in the country. Um, now it's now, now the, the thing is, do you look, get, get over that and, and continue to work? You know, and, that, and that's the, the, the biggest problem with, with young kids and even the NFL. I mean, when I played with Parcells in New England, we had a great year and we come back with a lousy year because you think you've reached it, like you're kind of there, but you're never the same team every year. Even if every guy comes back, you're not the same team. And so each year is its own different chapter. And so it's up to these guys to go, hey, we were kind of knocking on that door and it's time for us to kick that thing in. I think, I think Harbaugh said that or somebody said that, but it's very true. It's like, hey, we're there, but now are, am I going to put in the work to take us over that next hump? And that's, you know, to be, to be seen yet. You guys want to answer that? No. We're going to pass it. He's, Chris is going to give you a little insight on this. Yeah. Um, I think that really pushed us, what Coach Harlow was saying, that uh, he was preaching, do you believe, all week, all week. Um, even in his pregame speech, he was preaching the same message, and I think that really hit us home. Like, we really believe that we can be great. And we, like you said, we were there and a few things just didn't go our way, but that should push us to go harder. That should push us to be better and go attack every single team, every top team. We're not afraid. I don't think we're afraid. I think we'll, as long as we gel together, 
and we believe in each other and trust each other that we can be great. We can be extremely great. Knock any team down. Um, General's looked great. Um, he's he's very polished kid. He's a very bright kid. Um, it's it's just a matter of repetitions for him now because he is learning a new offense, uh, getting to learn his receivers, getting to learn our running backs and how they take handoffs and all those things. He's got a, the opportunity to be a really truly a great quarterback. Uh, I think with him, it's just reps and, and being together with these guys. Well, we'll start with the big guy right here. Uh, Jeff Percy is going to man left tackle this year. He was our right tackle last year. Uh, obviously, he's a Michigan commit. Um, he's got all the tools in the world to be a fantastic player. He's got length. He's got athleticism. He's got a little bit of nasty to him. You know, left guard. Both guards are kind of up for grabs right now. But I've got uh, Afidi uh, Mo, um, 6'3", 3'05", something like that, who's a really good player. Um, then we've also got a kind of a smaller kid in Rashad Beckham, uh, who's probably six foot two fifty, but really athletic kid, really, really high football IQ. That even if he doesn't start this year, he'll play some for us. Um, and then at center, uh, it's going to be Brody Crane, you know, six three, two hundred ninety pounder, uh, starting to get some uh, college love with his first offer from uh, a Hall of Fame guy, Kevin Mawai at Arizona State. He's an excellent player. I coached his uh, older brother uh, at SM for a bit. Um, played with his dad, uh, tough kid, smart kid, is going to get after it. Uh, right guard is either going to be Brandon Fleiss or Ross Masuli. Um, both kids are uh, really big kids. Uh, uh, Brandon is probably 6'2", right around 280. And then Ross is 6'3", 340. Um, and they can both move, or both smart kids, and get after it. And then right tackle is going to be a young kid, uh, Mason Murphy, who's 6'6", probably 285 now. He's looking a little thicker. Um, he's very raw, um, but he's he's getting better uh, every day. So we've got we've got some guys up front that can do it, and obviously we've got a great back in Chris, and we've got um, not only Chris, but we've got Sammy Green, Damon Williams. We've got some really explosive backs. Uh, I was six foot six and a half, two hundred. Well, my junior year was one hundred eighty-five pounds. My junior year or my senior year, I was two forty. They're bigger than I was in the NFL. I, mean, I played two years in the NFL after back surgery at 255, 265. Um, again, I, we've had great success at Chase Sarah. I've had two guards, that are literally 180 pounds, that were two-year starters for me, but they played their butts off. And it's really, it's not always about the size. It's kind of the size of the, 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 the fight and the dog, right? And I think, especially in high school, I think that's true. Now, if I've got some massive humans that have a lot of dog in them, and we can do some really good things. I mean, I got an unbelievably explosive back. His goal is for 2,000 yards this year. I don't know that that's unreachable. You know, I think that's a great goal for him. Um, so we've got, you know, we've got beef up front, um, and I think we've got we've added some stuff on the, on the defensive line, and we've got some great linebackers. You know, with with Jaden and Malaki, um, uh, Keegan Netherton, uh, Champ Johnson, and uh, Weeti Moe, and uh, we've got some really depth that we've not had last year. Jaden, what we have? Like three backers. It's tough to play a four-backer set when you've got three backers, you know? <laughs> and then we lost, who we lose in the, um, Vic. Vic, we lost Vic in the, in the playoff game. And now we're down to one backer. Um, but Mike Walcott's brilliant defensive coordinator and figured it out and put, put together a heck of a play, game plan. Uh, yeah, I'm extremely happy. You got some big humans to uh, open some holes for me. It basically, it always starts with them. It always starts with them. Um, and I'm just, it's just up to me to follow and make a play through those holes that they make.
two singers. Do, does that game stick with you still? Do you use it as motivation now, or does it, is it just so far in the past that you're, you're now on to the ceiling of that? Uh, I think at a certain point, you definitely have to kind of let that go, but it definitely gives us motivation coming into this next season to really like push ourselves and make sure that we're always on top of it and always uh, on our A game and like we can't let up, especially with the with the level of teams we have to face, not only in preseason but in Trinity League and uh, yeah, it's just it's just, it's it's a whole nother ball game really. Um, I agree with Jeff, but um, I think it's definitely a source of motivation and pushing the team. After the game, I was, I was pretty upset because I knew, I knew that we had that game. It's just little mistakes, mental errors that, that set us back. And after the game, I told the team, I was like, this, this can't happen again. This can't happen again. We can't slack off. We have to go full force in the weight room, in the classroom especially, and on the field at practice. And I definitely, it, it will be let go at a certain point, but we have to realize that, that that's not okay. I'll answer that one too. I haven't let it go. Um, and it's been, it's, been, it's been a great, it's a great teaching point, right? Um, in that the little things matter. You know, everything, and, and especially when, when we're playing really good teams, and Oaks Christian is a really good team, that the little things matter. And I, I can tell you that as a coaching staff, we did not feel good after Monday because I think at that time we thought um, as a team we were a little bit better and we're playing Oaks Christian, who's not a training league team, you know, uh, but a very good team. They won Division II the year before. A very good football team with a lot of, uh, a lot of t not only talent, but been in that situation before. So hopefully that's something we can grow from, and hopefully these these guys can look back because all these guys played in that game were huge parts of it. To go uh, that that can't happen again. And that starts in practice, and that actually starts in January, being on uh, on your P's and Q's uh, in the classroom, so that you can be in the weight room, so that you can be at all our uh, all our practices in the off season, um, and, and in the summer. And it's, it's just being on top. It's the little things that beat you. It's really it's those little details that beat you. And it's something that these guys have heard from me. Over and over again, it's do your job, you know, do your job the way it's supposed to do, uh, supposed to be done. And last year we played Pinnacle, and we were down 14, 21, 21, 21 points. Yeah. And everybody's like, man, you guys did a bunch of adjustments at halftime, man. It's like that's a great job of coaching. And I'm like, what was my speech at halftime? He said, do your job. Do your job. That was it. We didn't make not a single adjustment. Just do your job. You know, and, and it really comes down to those little things. Just doing your job the best you can and, and, and laying it out there. So our school, if you're struggling at all, you have to go to uh, study hall. It's mandatory twice a week. It doesn't matter if there's practice games or whatever. And I'm fully in favor of it because at the end of the day, what we do on the football field doesn't matter um, if you're not getting taken care of in the classroom. So we got guys that miss lifting or they're late to meetings because they have to be in study hall and those things add up, you know, and um, if we're not taking care of academics, then it does hurt us, you know, and it doesn't, you know, everybody's like, well, it's, it's football, this and that and the other, but it, it's it, in our level, the, all that little bit of time, because we are on 18 hours, so I can, it's like I can have these guys like in college or the pros, where I, that their job is to be football players. They've got to be students first. Um, and that's never going to change for us. And, and we're going to get guys prepared academically. But it can harm us if they're not taking care of their stuff um, during the week. Um, basically, um, right along with Coach Harlow said, yeah, it, it's important that you do take care of those little things and stay on top of your assignments because you, you miss something, you get behind about a week. So taking care of those things is very essential and people need to know the severity of being at lifts and being at practice and knowing what's going on, especially in those meetings when coach has a teaching point or he has something he wants to install or change real quick and those guys miss and then they don't understand. So that does play a big role, especially at practice and then we're all messing up and it's all confused and then that will translate into the game and it's not fixed. 
they, do you remember what your height and weight was as a freshman? Uh, I believe it was around six foot 185. What are you now? Now I'm six foot 205. Right. So could you talk about uh, about the growing strength and and your, your gaining experience and how that's going to make affect you as a linebacker as well? It's definitely going to help me uh, take on blocks and just play football, honestly. It helps me in every aspect of my game, running, taking on blocks, tackling, everything. Jay Genova is a football player, and he plays with a great motor and great intelligence and intensity, and that's why he's a great player. Um, and obviously, when you, you take all those intangibles and you put some size and strength to it, uh, I think his ceiling is out of, out of this world. I mean, I, I, he's a kid that I absolutely love coaching and being around. I've never seen him not be enthusiastic and fired up for practice. Um, he's, he's just absolutely everything you could ask for. Um, if I was drawing up, you know, the perfect J. Sarah Lyon. Siale is the same way. I mean, this kid brings it every single day. He's never, never a problem. Works his tail off. He squatted five, five thirty yesterday. He's a going. He's really still a sophomore technically. Benching close to three fifty, if not three fifty, um, and he just plays with such a motor, and he's just such a great kid to have on our team. You know, truly, a true leader. Siali is a defensive lineman because he plays all over the place, and uh, he fancies himself as a receiver. <laughs> uh, but he's a heck of a fullback too. I mean, he, he, we, when we run trap or dive or something, he's he's a load. I mean, he's 270 pounds coming downhill with uh, you know with some power. He's he's an impressive young man. Well, absolutely. You know, obviously, Chris is going to be kind of our our workhorse mm -hmm. as a back, but he's so talented catching the ball as well. And then we've got another talent, very talented kid in Sammy Green, uh, that's very explosive. That can is a threat to take it to the house anytime he touches it. So now I've got both of these guys in the backfield at one time, or both of them on the field at one time. You know, defenses you're going to have to pay attention to them, and they're going to find out real quick that you're going to have to pay attention to Sammy Green as well. And then I got Gary Morrison and Keen Burnett uh, and, and uh, Ernest McDaniel uh, as receivers. It's like you're going to have to pick some of your poison, and, and it'll be interesting to see how people try to defend us when we have all those guys on the field at the same time. Uh, this is going to be for Ciali and uh, Jaden. Uh, obviously, last year I thought one of the things that was most impressive about uh, Jason as a whole was. I think that all starts with like the mentality. You got to be a real dog to be in the front seven. Take a real warrior, you know. But um, it takes a lot of grit. Got to be able to give you all every time. That's really mainly what it is, the dog inside of you. To attack the quarterback like that, I mean, you gotta be a dog. That's not. That's all it is. I mean, there's nothing else you gotta do. You gotta fight. I mean, you get, might have to take one for your brother. Like we're all coming. Someone's gonna get blocked, but your brother's gonna come free, and he's gonna make the play. We all trust each other to make the play. We know what's gonna go down. I've got to give a, a lot of credit to our defense coordinator, Mike Walcott, who I think just did an unbelievable job last year. Uh, we started off, I mean, we were going to be a base out of a 4-2-5. We had some injuries. Um, and then we got into a lot of uh, a, a lot of odd looks. And then dropping, you know, bringing Vic down, we get into an even front look and, and, and bringing athletes off the edges. And again, th these guys are tenacious, you know. And, and, and 
they're, they're fun to watch because it's important to them. And it's important to, to them to do their job so that their brother can do their job and, and make plays. And, and the, the most exciting thing for me as a coach last year is we played really, really complimentary football. And, and these guys have heard me talk about it. Uh, you know Scott McKnight's one of the best special teams coaches around. And it's, our special teams makes a play in every game. It might be a block kick. It might be a kick return for a touchdown, a punt, something. We're going to do something great. Um, we may punt and pin somebody. If they punt and pin them, then our defense goes out there, unleash those dogs on them a little bit, or lions, yeah. you know, like on Savannah, going and getting some prey. And then we get, like, we had a, one of my good friends, said, you guys aren't really explosive on offense last year. Like, we can't be that explosive, but you only have to go 40 yards. Because we pinned them, defense went out there, did their job, offense went out and made a score. And that's just, that's the way football should be played. It's really complimentary because it is three phases, and we take a ton of pride. Uh, and being a great special teams. And last year, I was super, super excited about our defense and the way they played. But this year, they got to go out and reestablish themselves because we lost some great players off that team. So it's time for who's going to be my next Vic, you know, who's going to be my next Sean Nielsen. And we got to have guys step up and take those roles. And that's what camp's about.